sugar and spice There's an apple pie in Sammy's Cottage Kitchen Hi, welcome to Sammy's Cottage Kitchen Today we're filming from Langenberg That's where I hail from And uh, it's wonderful to be here with Access TV And having a cooking good time I'm sitting here with my knife like I'm going to threaten somebody But no, I'm doing this for the love of cooking I'm making a meal. I'm going to make a complete meal. It may seem like it's a daunting meal, but it's not. It's going to be pork marsala. Pork tenderloin marsala. Now, the, the traditional dish actually is made with veal, but veal is a tremendously expensive dish. So, I decide I'm going to do the pork. And the pork needs trimming, it needs cutting, it needs marinating. I've got other things ready to go to. I'm going to be making Parmesan, Parma cups I call them. I'm going to be roasting Parmesan in a pan to make a little cup that we're going to serve salad in. I've also roasted off some peppers before you all got here, <laughs> before I started the show. Because I can't be having the fellows running out after me on the barbecue. And I'm going to show you how to make a wonderful roasted pepper coulee that's going to go on the salad, on the Parma cups. And we're going to put some toasted pine nuts on top of that too. So a very elite meal without too much of a problem. Now, I'm going to move some of these things because one of the first things we're going to do is the pork because it needs to marinate. I'm going to grab it from the fridge for a minute. It's the one thing I forgot to take out of the fridge. Good Canadian pork. Canadian Western pork. <laughs> you see, I'm a, I'm a hog farmer's daughter. This is not a joke. So it doesn't matter what we were trying to make. I learned how to cook everything pork. And I learned to cook at a very young age. I talked about that earlier. I just got to get some cellophane. Sometimes you think you have it all together, but you don't. My, uh, my dad would always come to me because he knew I liked to cook. Mom, crazy as it was, was a hog farmer's wife, did not like pork, not at all. That was kind of funny. But he knew that I did and I would do something. So I remember him coming one time because sometimes pigs had to be butchered younger because of, I don't know, a rupture or something. And having a large family, of course, he did not want to waste the meat. So he came to me with these tiny little rib cages. And he says, can you make something out of these? I was 12. I thought, ah, uh, I don't know, but I'll try. And every time I've done that in my life, when I said, I don't know, but I'll try, darn it, I can do it. And then I get another job. Seems to be the way it goes. I uh, have to grab a cutting board out of here. I wasn't quite together on that because I have to clean off and show how to trim the pork. So I laid down the cellophane. Cellophane? cellophane? <laughs> I think we all have a cellophane. Is that the truth? I remember us, we're singing a song when we're doing our music and one of the songs is called uh, I'm gonna call her on my cellophane. Pretty funny. It's the one song I get Jack to sing after 20 some odd years of playing together. I finally got him to uh, sing uh, a duet. Kind of some old rockabilly thing. And that's part of the words in there. Now if you look at this meat, I was just playing around with it for a minute. It's just one tenderloin. We're just going to do one. You see there's a, a silver skin. It's called a silver skin. That's not good. You have to get that off. If you don't get that off, you're going to have a tough slice of meat. So you just kind of get underneath that silver skin. You don't want to waste a lot of meat, but you're going to go halfway down the pork like that. And go like that and get that off. See, I've got hardly any meat lost on that. It has to come off though. So you just keep going with that until you get all that silver skin off. You don't want that. And it's also excess fat. This is a nice lean cut of meat. 
So you're gonna to want to know that you're having lean meat. You don't you don't want to feed people fat in this situation. If you're having a fatty old pork chop, well then you have a fatty old pork chop. And that's all cool. But even then it should be cooked and rendered out a bit. So there you go, that's as simple as that. Now I'm gonna take this meat and you're gonna cut it into about, oh I'd say at least half inch pieces. Like that. Mm, it's more like an inch, I think. Three quarters of an inch. <laughs> I think that's what it is. And you cut pieces like this all the way because you're going to hammer this out to make it really thin. The meat cooks in two minutes, which makes it fabulous. It's the pre prep that causes some doings. So now you're going to want a little bit of things to marinate this meat. You can make two, I'm just making enough for two people, really, but it's a healthy, it's a healthy serving for two people, so you can break that down and make it for four people. It depends on the appetites of everybody. I'm going to need a Worcestershire sauce. I've hidden it in here somewhere. I have to find that. I found it. Kind of important. I've also got some really nice powdered, but I like this one. Uh, roasted garlic and that's a nice flavor because it doesn't add you, you like if you if you do a whole garlic and put it in there it can come kind of in chunks I'm just finding another little piece here so now I'm going to take this board out from underneath here and I'm going to I, I laid out the cellophane right and I'm going to want to put the meat on it so that I can hammer on the board you don't want to mess. I'll, I'll show you why I'm doing this in a minute. When you take a hammer to the meat, well, first of all, you don't want to get a whole bunch of meat in the hammer. And you don't want to have, you know, splatter all over the place. So now I'm going to put that back on the board like that. And then I'm going to take this piece and put it over top. But first, I'm going to put the marinating things on it, right? So I've got a little bit of lemon here. Lemon juice is always a good thing for a marinade. So a touch of lemon juice. Always put your hand over because in case of a seed coming out, which I mean you're going to see in this situation for sure. Oh, there you go, a seed. And if you have a little cut in your finger, when you do this lemon, you will know it. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Woohoo! I think I have a cut in my finger. I'm going to take this, a little bit of garlic powder, and I'm going to put that on top of that. It's a crazy habit I've got. I throw towels over my shoulder because, well, it's handy. So just a little bit of garlic, but you need to flavor your pork. So the, the lemon that I put on there and a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, it's going to be an extremely good tender, tenderizer. And because I'm doing this first, it's going to have a half an hour to sit and tenderize. It also adds a wonderful flavor. I also like putting a little bit of herbes de Provence. Now, that's everybody's choice. You can also put a little bit of rosemary. You might notice I have my own little garden growing back here. I'll use a little bit of rosemary when I make the potatoes, I think because I think the flavors will go good together with this. So a little bit of... Herbes de Provence is uh, a mixture of lavender, rosemary, thyme, sage. So it's the herbs of the province. And in this case, the province is Saskatchewan. And whatever I grow goes in my Herbes de Provence. I just have to run over here and get my meat hammer. This is kind of fun. Somebody doesn't like my food, they're insulting me. I, I got weapons in the kitchen, right? My grandma's. And grandpa survived it. So I guess he didn't insult her food too often. So now what I'm doing is just hammering this out. It's a noisy job. But you need to flatten it right out. 
because uh -oh, one escaped. Because it's that's what why you can cook it so fast. I know what I'm trying to say. I'm just concentrating on other things. Oh yeah. Sometimes I'm just thinking stuff, and I think I said it. Well, it's kind of scary. Sometimes I just live in my own little movie. Aren't you feeling a little sorry for my husband right now? <laughs> I was starting to tell you the story about the pork and being raised that way with having to do that. My younger brother, he was really young, but he was really into all this stuff too. I think I was 12, so he was only about eight. And another time, dad came with a, a whole little pig, you know, and I said, yeah, what do you want me to do with that? And he said, I don't know, just cook it. Jeez. You know, I didn't have any training or any experience. Boy, am I noisy enough? Anyway, my brother thought, I'll help you. Maybe we can stick it on some pit and put it over the fire. And, and we did. And he diligently helped me and rolled that crazy pig until it was cooked. And we made the best little pig ever. It was just a little suckling pig like this. It was a weird thing to do as a kid. In the music world, it's kind of funny because people will often ask me to sing an old Loretta Lynn song called uh, The Coal Miner's Daughter. I said, I can't sing that because I'm a, fa I'm, I'm a hog farmer's daughter. So then I would start singing, well, I was born a hog farmer's daughter. <laughs> and they just let me alone. <laughs> I'm going to put this in the fridge right now to keep chilling while I prepare the other foods. Oh. Oh, if it doesn't fall out on me. I guess I'm getting too much food in the fridge. We might have to eat some. <laughs> All right. Now I'm just going to cover up the rest of the pork because what's nice when you buy a package of pork like this, you can separate it. I always separate it into separate bags and vacuum pack it with my trusty little this is a really nice little unit you can get yourself. It's so simple. And you get the bags that go with it, and you just, like, like that, you suck the air out. You can freeze things, berries, meat. Keeps for up to half a year. You can go to the local hardware and find it. Seriously, it's worth it. So I'm just going to put the meat away. And while I'm getting prepared to do the next thing, I want to tell you that we're releasing a brand new album. It's called um, Life's Kaleidoscope. And we're very proud of it. I'm a singer-songwriter, so I've been writing the songs for about two and a half years in between other things that I've been doing. And my husband does all the arranging, and he's my guitar player. So I would like very much for you to just kick back and listen to one of the tunes that's on the album, actually. It's called Life's Kaleidoscope, while I'm getting ready for the rest of the things. As a child, I received a very special toy, a kaleidoscope with a wish for each twist and turn to bring me joy, each twist of the wrist. Watching flowers turn to diamonds and diamonds back into flowers. Then with the slightest of hand, all those stones came tumbling down. As I grew, I quickly knew this was a lot like life somehow. Little twists and sudden turns like the stones the world turns upside down and that's life not always kind not always as you hoped the alteration of life in all its scope is just one turn in life's kaleidoscope 
Hang around that rosy pocket full of posy life throws curves and we all fall down. Pick it up, dust it off. There's no time to move. It's a living, laughing, loving, and crying when dreams collide with hope. It's just one more twist, one more turn. tried to turn it back that kaleidoscope those stones just never fall the same way as you hope Well, I hope you've enjoyed listening to our song. It is the title cut of the album. Sometimes life is a little serious and not always kind, and that's what that song is about. Now, we're gonna move on to the next uh, thing that we're doing. It's going to be, I've got a big brick here of, what is it, 12 year or 16 year aged Parmesan cheese. Now, I'm gonna grate it on a fine grater, on the box grater like this. I've already turned the oven on, I mean the oven, the, the burner, with this nice little pan. I'm going to make us little Parmesan cups. I'm going to have to put the fan on though for that one because it smokes. And meanwhile, I'm just going to grate this down. I'd be smarter to do it over here though because cause I'm short. <laughs> I'm always too short. Every time I'm reaching for the top shelf and looking for a ladder, just that one inch too short. Oh well, are we ever satisfied? When we have dark hair, we want blonde hair. And when it starts turning gray, well, you just turn it blonde and dark. Yeah, you do everything you can. Never satisfied. And now, apparently, gray is the in color. I'm doing it all backwards. OK, as you see, I'm getting quite a nice little dish here of grated Parmesan. Muscle power, you need muscle power. I'm just going to set this aside. While you were listening to the song, I was peeling the carrots because, you know, it has to be done. I'm just going to set this over here. I'm going to need a piece of paper toweling handy because when I'm cooking the, uh, the cheese and I'm getting ready to dump it onto this thing, it's, it's quite greasy. But if you put the paper towel underneath it, that's not the smartest idea. You need to just have it handy in your hand so that when I dump it onto the little dish here, then I just go like this, and it kind of helps to shape it on there too right away. So it's good for you to see what I'm doing in that way. I think the pan's getting there. Now I'm going to have to turn the fan on, which makes things a little bit noisy. I'll just talk louder. <laughs> so you see, just sprinkle the bottom of the pan in like that. Not too much. I'm going to get a flat spatula in case I feel I need to do something underneath it. So if you, can you see a good sizzle on it? It has to be a high heat. Once I see that the heat is where it needs to be, then I'll 
and bring it back. So you see what's happening? It's bubbling and see, getting all really nice and kind of lacy around the outside. Well, that's the kind of cheese cup that it's going to be. And if you like the taste of toasted cheese, you're going to love this. Okay, now it's getting plenty hot so I can turn it right down. While I'm standing here and watching that, I'm going to turn the oven on to about 400 degrees and start because I'm going to be putting some baby potatoes in there for roasting that's going to go with our meal. The meat is marinating. It's ready to go. It's only going to take two minutes. I think this is pretty much ready. But you take it off like that and you check. Oh yeah, it looks pretty good. Doesn't seem like it's going to happen until you go to put it over top of there. Look at that. Woohoo! Cooked up. Put this back on the pan. Get the next cheese in there right away. You can put less, you can put more. Up to you. I'm going to make a few cups of these because, you know, I want everybody to have one of these. And, when it's, and it cools down fast. It takes a shape really fast and it cools down pretty fast. See? You take it out and you set it there. Now that one could have cooked a little bit longer. You see it's got, it's a little bit soft on the inside. Still very edible. But you will learn how to do it. Do, learning to do by doing. We were all in the 4-H club. Learned that one. We, uh, we raised calves. We were in the 4-H beef club. That was a lot of fun. The worst thing, though, was having, as a little kid, having to raise this animal as a pet and then watch it being sold because you have to eat it or something. Ah, it was terrible. <laughs> you know, I wonder how many children still go through that. What a crazy thing. But that's the farm life and the farm ideas. You have to know that that's what you do. So I hope you're getting the right notion on this. You see the look of it? I'm going to cook this one a little longer because the reason it was a little softer on the inside and crispy on the outside is because I had maybe a little too much cheese in there too. You just wing it. You try a few different things and then you see what works the best for you but it is tasty. It makes a salad so inviting and tasty. Yeah, I think that one's ready too. So, on we go. Flip it, put it back on the pan. Because I want to have an extra one for sure, um, even if it breaks up because I like to use it as garnish in the salad. sit for a few minutes. Let that one go too. And as soon as that's finished, then I'm going to show you the roasted peppers that I've done. Um, I think I showed you briefly. I'm going to have to take them out of the, the pot here, skin them and core them and slice them and marinate them. And that's going to be a part of the salad. Is it going to make it or is it going to break? Aha! Voila! <laughs> this smells good though in here. Wow! It's not even a pizzeria! Okay, so it's just about finished. I think I'm just going to do the three cups. I don't know. Maybe I could grate a little extra. I can do four. What am I thinking? Of course. The extra one never hurts. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. It doesn't hurt to make extra because they keep in a dry, you just store them in a dry place and they will keep for days, like just in a covered tub of some sort. How are we doing? Are we burning it? Almost. It doesn't matter if it's a little crooked because I kind of want them that way. One more. So it doesn't take a long time. It's good though to have the right size pan. Makes it so much easier. I fooled around with it for a while before I got it the way I wanted. I thought, oh man, is this ever gonna work? And that's because I was, I was using too big of a pan and I didn't know what, where to go with it kind of thing. 
go. That's another one. And I'll put this cheese in the fridge because you should always re-refrigerate your cheese immediately. I'm also going to be showing you, um, I'll be cutting up the carrots and getting them ready to go because a lot of people think that when you're making a meal, it's not that important uh, about the vegetables. Oh, it's just the meat and, and stuff. But it's very important to have good vegetables with your meal. And like I said, this is a fairly healthy meal. Cheese, well, it's healthy. You just got to watch how much of it, right? I'm going to shut it off because it's plenty warm. And then I'm just going to put this out of the way. I've got this one ready because I need to put the potatoes in that one when I get it in the oven. It's just about ready. And these are just going to sit to the side and wait. The smell is making me hungry. I guess what I'm making here with this meal, see what happened? I did it first on the paper. And it doesn't work nearly as good. I did it on purpose because I wanted to show you that. But it'll work. I'm going to set it to the side and put this hot pan over there too. So I'm going to need that same pan for roasting off the pine nuts. Maybe I should show you that quickly. You don't even have to clean the cheese out of it, but I, I would prefer to do that. Uh, you're going to want to, to I'm topping the salad with a little bit of toasted pine nuts. <laughs> you don't want to ever leave those because, you know, they're worth their weight in gold. We always say that every little nugget is like a gold piece. I'm just going to take that little bit of cheese off my burner. I've got wonderful camera guys here, but I just don't know how they can keep up with me in the kitchen. They're running from this end to the next end, and doesn't she stand still somewhere? When you're toasting pine nuts, you've got a hot pan like that. You're gonna, you want to just toast them and you got to get them out of the pan because they will continue to cook in the pan and they'll burn and once they're burned they're bitter and we're not looking for bitter in our dish. I can move this out of the way. And while I'm waiting for that I'm just going to grab these potatoes, these baby potatoes and I'm going to get them into a pot because I shouldn't be leaving them too long, but I am. But I'm going to parboil the potatoes. Wow, well, I got one that got away. You don't need too many. But it's important to parboil them a little bit before you put them in the oven. See these? They're already toasting. Smell great. Shut the, shut the stove off. I'm turning on the potatoes because I need those to Oh, I better get the potato that got away. I need the lid for that. I bet I put it away. I'll find it later. Okay, so now that's done. So now your pre-prep is ready for the salad. Before I get on to cutting up the peppers, I'm going to cut up these carrots. My dad made me this. My dad was a great influence in my life. My parents were good guiding people for a large family like we were. I was surprised that they had the time, that they took the time that they did for us. They both were leaders in that 4-H club that I was talking about. Anyway, he put this thing together for me. <laughs> and it makes the carrots look nicer, you know, because you've got ridges. You can buy them in the bags like that, but they taste like, I don't know, water or something. There's something wrong with them. So you see how quickly it works? And then you get these wonderful ridges on the, on the carrots. So it makes a nice presentation on the plate. Now I'm a bit of a stickler to make sure that the presentations are nice when you're putting food together. But I'm more of a stickler about the flavor. I think that herbs and spices are used and abused. And I think you have to be really careful about that. That, you know, how much you use, what you use for which dish. Now, these carrots are going to be maple glaze with a bit of herb, tarragon herb with them. Why not? Good Canadian maple syrup. 
Just like that, the carrots are ready. And I'm just going to hold those, put a little water on them. Never let them sit without water because, first of all, you can make the mistake of putting them on the burner in a hurry and forgetting that you didn't put water in there. Of course, that's never happened to me. <laughs> what would we be like if we didn't have some experience, right, in our cooking? All right, now the peppers. Messy job, but a nice one. So you take these peppers like this, paper towel, it's your friend in the kitchen. Definitely your friend in the kitchen. So, I have a bowl. And I have to take these like this and you tear them open because they're nice and soft from what you did. Now you got to take out the seeds. You don't want all those seeds in there. But you also want to take the black and the skin completely off of these peppers. And it just peels off. It's a bit messy, but it just peels off. You see my carrots are going to town over there and I'm going to have to go turn them down with my messy hands. But that's okay. I just got to rinse them off in the sink. Now when you want to roast up peppers, I always suggest to everybody, do a batch. Do 10 of them. They again, keep in the fridge forever. That's the potatoes. I thought it was carrots. What am I saying? What am I cooking? <laughs> Too many things being cooked. I'm only going to parboil those for about uh, oh, five minutes because you don't want them smooshy. And then I'm gonna strain them off. So now I've got some, some seeds and things in there. I'm gonna take most of that out of there. And you can take a good sharp knife. One of the biggest tests, if your knives are sharp enough, is cutting peppers, raw or cooked. They're a tough, funny vegetable. So now, you're going to take these and you're going to do a slice like this on them. Really thin. Or you can do this. However you feel like cutting. As long as you get those nice thin strips going on with your peppers. Put them in the bowl. Because with that, I'm going to take some wonderful basil that's here. And some olive oil. A little bit of pepper. A little bit of garlic, and you're going to have wonderful tasting pepper coulee. Well, there we go. I cut up the peppers, and look at that. They're wonderful. I got some, I put in a little bit of basil. I'm going to grab a little more. If you'll see on the window here, I've got a nice little windowsill garden, and I like growing it. I actually have transplanted some of it outside now, but I want to add a little bit more basil. I should rinse it off, I guess, because after all, it does grow in dirt, doesn't it? Although, a little dirt never hurt. In cooking, that's another story. So I just slice it up nice and fine like that, because it brings out the flavor in it. And when you're chopping up basil, you kind of have to do it that like that. And then you put it in. I've got a little bit of garlic in there already. You just didn't see me do that. I did that when your backs were turned. And I've got some extra virgin olive oil. It's a wonderful thing to put in there. I also put a little bit of lemon juice in it. Now I just need a little fork. I've got a very big fork. Guess that'll work. To just mix that up so that it has a chance to marinate all together. And that's going to be a part of our salad. I'm going to move that over here to the salad stuff. Now, a little trick I want to show you about asparagus. It's asparagus season. I should talk first about the oil. You might see here that I have extra virgin olive oil here, right here. I've still got a burner on that I should shut off. And over here I've got avocado oil. This is avocado mixed with coconut. But I've also got avocado oil. You must know I cook with avocado oil with a bottle this big. There's a reason. When you're cooking with olive oil, you can saute with it. It's wonderful for salads, for dressings, for anything that you're doing. But 
the moment that you bring this to too high of a, you bring this one to too high of a heat, it turns into a trans fat. It goes from a good fat to a trans fat. So yeah, be careful with that. Try to use it more for salads and for light sauteing. And stick to the good old avocado oil. You can get it at the superstore. You can get it at any of the super. It's new. A lot of people don't know about it, but I've noticed now almost every store I've been, they have them. I was even in Costco and I found that great big bottle. Now let's go back to the asparagus. This is out of my garden. It's all washed already. But we always throw away too much of it. I cut the very ends off, oh, about half an inch. Now I'm going to take this peeler and I'm going to peel the bottom three inches off of the asparagus like that. I'm going to lay it in the pan because that will take away any of the tough strings that could be left there because you didn't you know snap it off at the right place or something like that but I just hate to waste that much of the asparagus so I'm asking you to do this with your asparagus if you feel like it there's more to it than that look at how pretty it looks the presentation when that's cooked this green turns more green and this stays light green so it becomes a very nice presentation now, I've left my asparagus a fair long for that pan but I like cooking my asparagus in a, in a saucepan like that like in a, a skillet I'll just cut off a little bit there otherwise they're not going to fit a ah, very long asparagus so while I'm getting this asparagus ready and preparing to prepare the meat and the salad I'm gonna have you listen to another song off of our new album we have got six other albums this is just the one that I want to tell everybody about because it's coming out in July first on Canada birthday and it's a special birthday 150 years for Canada and so I would like very much if people would listen uh, to it now so that they know about it when it comes out it's being released as a birthday present for Canada and a wonderful thing for me to be able to do I'm going to do a song right now called the Big Apple we're gonna play that one and that's a fun story of its own where my sisters and I all went off to New York and it's a true story and the experience we had there the New Yorkers were awesome it was just so hot and so crazy and uh, well Here's the story. Enjoy it. My sisters and me got this crazy idea. Gonna go to New York to see what we can see. Hop the plane, hop the bus. Got on the set, we got the best of us. Hit those New York streets. Man, these girls were. But not like sex in the city 97 degrees, 92% humidity Saw the Yankees play, saw the Yankees win What they charge for beer, man, that was a sin Ten bucks a pop, we savored every drop Yeah, we nibbled our way around that big apple Couldn't find our way, but a good map will get you to Broadway I hope you enjoyed my silly New York song, The Big Apple, while I was peeling asparagus. It was a lot of fun. 
And you know, that's what cooking is. It's fun. And yeah, it takes a little bit of work. You gotta peel things, you gotta take care of things, you gotta make sure that, you know, you do it all within the right timing in order to do things right. That's okay. Sometimes it isn't always exactly right. But you still gotta make sure you're loving what you're doing or don't do it at all. I'm getting the asparagus ready to go on. It only goes on just when I'm about to do up the meat. I'm just throwing the potatoes in the oven. I'm going to put a little bit of fresh rosemary on the potatoes, a little bit of salt and pepper. Oh, pepper, I'll let people put their own salt on. And I put a little bit of oil, and I'm using the avocado and the coconut because, like I said, it can come to a full heat. And it won't break down into trans fat. I'm going to put a little bit, a little bit of the garlic in there as well, and a touch of herbes de Provence, because the herbes de Provence has rosemary, but it also has other herbs in it. So it's a really wonderful aromatic way to make potatoes. And you just put them in a glass dish like that, toss them around and throw them in a high heat oven, which I turned on earlier. And I'm going to put the timer on for about 15 minutes. Now we're gonna get ready for the meat. I'm going to get a pan out of my trusty little cupboard. This is a good pan because you see, we're gonna be doing some flambéing here and the pan has to fit inside there. But I'm gonna start it on the stove. So I'm gonna bring it to heat, full heat. And I'm going to have to use a little bit of this oil as well. Well, I hope everybody's getting hungry because this meal is coming to a head. It's just about ready. I'm going to take the meat over here. It needs to have just a little bit of a flour. It just holds the whole thing together. It just needs such a touch. And I just put it on both sides because as soon as that pan comes to heat, I'm putting a little bit of oil in the pan. Because what I do is I start with oil and then I take a little bit of butter and put it in when I flip the meat over. I'm going to put butter in there because it just, it's such a little bit of butter, it's like a teaspoon, but it makes the whole difference in the flavor. So, I think I'm just about ready with this. How's the pan? Ah, dirty hands. <laughs> I'm going to grab a dish here on the side because I'm going to be making up the salads in, in a minute or two. And I think the carrots are doing very well too and they're going to have to be sautéed at the last minute as well. I need another skillet for that, won't I? Yeah, I can take the uh, asparagus out of that one, I think. Why dirty all the dishes in the house? <laughs> so, I'm going to put about a tablespoon of oil in the pan, measured very well, as you've noticed. I always measure so perfectly. When it comes to baking, I measure more. When it comes to cooking, I wing it a little bit. You might wonder what all this is. I've got booze that goes in the food, not for drinking. And to everybody's disgruntlement, I'm going to flambe it off. <laughs> Get rid of all the alcohol. What fun is that, right? Just got to check my carrots for a minute. Yeah, they need a little bit more. The reason I'm doing up some carrots and asparagus is, like I said, you want to have a nice, yeah, you want to have taste in your food, but you also want some presentation in it. So I'm trying to make sure we have both of those. So I'm just waiting for that. I'm, while I'm waiting for this to come to heat, I think what I'm going to do is just put the salads together. So you'll see what I'm doing here. I'm just going to move the meat, obviously. 
salad and the meat just going to go together. So you got these little Parmesan cups, right? And I have some salad that's already cut up. These are wonderful keepers. If you can get your hands on these, do it. They, you can put vegetables in there and they keep, they just keep for weeks. So I just put a little bit, like, this isn't a big salad. This is more of a, almost an appetizer type salad. Because you're going to have that nice Parmesan cup, but you're also going to have a little bit of greens here. Right? And now, remember we did the peppers up? How's my pan doing? It's almost there. Needs quite a bit to get the start on it. Uh, I need a fork. Looks nice, doesn't it? Look at this. With the fresh basil and the fresh peppers roasted like that. Now you're going to take out like that. You don't need dressing because this is the dressing. All right? So I'm going to do that up, all right? Get my pan's just about there. Then I had this extra Parmesan cup that I made on purpose because I want to just take a piece and put it in the top here like that. It's a great uh, garnish. I think I hear the splatter. Now remember these wonderful little pine nuts? I'm going to sprinkle that on top and let a few fall on the plate. That's fine. Awesome. There's your salads ready to go. Set them aside. Maybe I should put them where people can see them. Let's set them right up here. There's the salad ready to go. My pan is hot, it's sizzling hot, but that's what I wanted. Because when I put the meat in there, I want it to happen now. Okay. Grabbing the meat in the pan. Going to need the fan. My beautiful fan that my my daughter-in-law and my son made for me. Can't believe they did that. They designed it. My son knew the color I was looking for. He just had it nailed. And my daughter-in-law made the whole design. And my son did. My son Wes. My daughter-in-law's name is Katie Mesmer. My son is Wes Mesmer. The, uh, yeah, something I'm going to be very proud of. I don't think she knew how much work it was going to be until she got in the middle of it because so many people have come to me and said, oh, who made that for you? Because we sure like one of them. And so I told my, my daughter-in-law, she says, there will only be one. And I said, woohoo, I have a designer. In other words, it was that much work. Now I'm going to turn the asparagus on because it needs to cook just for two minutes as well. Now you see this is coming to a nice sear already. I'm ready to put a little bit of butter in it. So two small dots, one on each side so to speak, so it kind of gets around the pan. Well, I haven't even had time to tell a whole bunch of stories in this cooking one because I've been busy cooking. I gotta cook less so I can tell more silly stories. Now you're gonna see this makes a splattery mess, but hey, it's okay. That's coming up to heat. These are ready for turning, you see? A nice, they're brown, just brown. I'm gonna be able to turn off the heat. I just did, but leave it on the hot burner. Like that. Now, I'm going to find my lid. I'm just going to put that lid on for a minute to hold in all the heat and everything. Then I'm going to try to do this without blowing the place up. Okay. Aha! <laughs> Always scares me when I'm doing that sort of stuff. Now comes the fun part. That meat, believe it or not, is already done. 
quick turn again, make sure. Oh, and it still can cook a little. And if you cook it too long, you're gonna get tough meat. That's not cool. Okay, so now, this is the fun part. We're gonna put in the marsala, and then you're gonna let it catch on fire. Woohoo! <laughs> it's wonderful when you do that for visitors and company and everybody, and they think it's such a wonderful thing, and really you're almost burning your place down for them. It's kind of funny. I'm gonna shut off the asparagus and the carrots. I'm going to take the meat out of the pan for a minute. And I'm going to leave the pan going because I'm going to add a little bit of cream to this. And that's going to be the sauce that you serve with the thing. So. Take the asparagus off the burner. Put a little bit of cream in the pan. And then I can shut off the burner. It's wonderful. See the cream, the sauce, and all those flavors in there? I'm just gonna throw the meat back in there for a minute, but keep it off the heat and put the lid on it. It just will be really wonderful to have the flavors. I've got to um, put the rest of the meal together on, on a plate, so. Where did I hide the lid? There I had the lid. I need to grab another plate so that when I'm serving that up, we will have actual servings. I just have to remove a few things here. So it's really fun to have a burner like that to make the flambe. I'm going to quickly drain off the asparagus. It's as quick as that. It's ready. I'm going to put just a dash. I like, actually, a little bit of that avocado oil with it. It's a, it's a wonderful thing to do instead of butter. Like that. A little bit of cracked pepper. You'll see why that'll look so nice on the plate. Now I've got to grab the carrots as well because they're done. Drain them off. They're hot, but I knew that. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of maple syrup. I'm gonna take a little bit of tarragon. Tarragon, my God, I was trying to grow that. I couldn't find it anywhere. I couldn't find seeds, nothing, it was crazy. I finally did. So I've got some growing out there. Do you know that one tiny little thing of tarragon when you're buying it costs about $8, 8 to $10. One wee little package or little jar. It's crazy. So very quickly throwing these veggies together because you don't want them to get, um, again, you don't have to use butter. You can, oh, I think I will use a little butter on that, on the carrots. It just tastes better. And a little tarragon, pinch of tarragon. Tarragon tastes like licorice, in case you're wondering. And then a little bit of good Canadian a maple syrup. Canadian maple syrup. I'm one of these days when I have one of my cooking things that I'm doing, the shows. I'm definitely going to show you how to make a um, cedar plank salmon. And we're going to do that with uh, maple syrup as well. We're going to do some barbecuing stuff coming up. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what to do, how to present this plate. I'm going to move this. Away. As you see, we got the nice salad going on there already. Now we're going to have two plates here. The plates, the potatoes are in the oven, so I'm going to grab those out of there. The plates actually could be a little bit warmed up. That would have been nicer to do. But you see the potatoes? They look great. You don't want too many potatoes on your dish. So you're going to lay this out like this. Hmm, I think I want a little bit. Hmm that in there. 
you want your carrots to taste sweet because unless they've just come out of the garden, they're not going to have the sweet flavor. Now we're going to go back to the meat. This is important that the meat and the sauce are on the plate first. Now my pan only allowed me to make what? I have a strange, odd one. I guess that's for the guys and this one's for the girls. <laughs> and then you take this sauce like this over the meat because you want that to be on the plate, like floating on the plate a bit. Right? Meat, and then you very quickly plate the rest. Tweezers. Oh, I'm gonna just bring the pan over. I just need my pot holders. I almost burned my fingers on the last one. Just see how pretty it looks. It's a palette. Okay, so now you're gonna put a couple of potatoes. Never put two, always put three. It's a good number. See, I have four, I shouldn't. I should have three. Or five. Well, five is a bunch, so I don't think I'd do five. Okay. Now you're going to have right next to the potatoes, you're gonna put some nice maple glazed carrots. That, a little bit more. I made two, two vegetables because I think it's important to have extra vegetables in your meal. Now look at how pretty this asparagus is on the side with its ends cut off like that. Aren't you ready to sink your teeth into that one? I think you are. Look at that. Now, a nice garnish is always good. Well, my good fortune is that I have got some nice rosemary over here that I put on the meat, like that. Wait, we got one final thing that I have to put together with this. I have to shut my fan off. It's competition. Woohoo! You see, I have something that if anybody wants to spice up the meal just a little bit, I can do that for them. And if they insult my meal, I can injure them. <laughs> so anybody wants pepper on their meal, this is what I do. And yes, cooking is fun. Thanks for hanging out with me. And that is our pork marsala dish. It's delicious. I hope you enjoy it. When you want the recipe, you just have to contact me on uh, my website, which is www.sammyroseholenberg.com. If you were looking for some private cooking lessons, I'm happy to do that too, either in your home or in mine. And it's 306-743-7514. Thanks and bon appetit.